season's over. We're back with more of the nightly sports call. Gene is always enthralled by the NBA partial scores at the bottom of the screen on the Bordis and Bordis ticker there. And I know you're a big fan of Giannis Antetokounmpo of the Milwaukee Bucks, Gene. I'm trying to follow the 76ers <laughs> as best as I can, but, you know, these partial scores, uh, you know, what is more useless than a partial NBA score, really? Well, those of out there who are uh, putting some action on it, that's very useful. At least you get your hopes high or your one okay. of the two. Let's go out to line four. That's Alinda in Squirrel Hill. What's up, Alinda? Yes, I wish Martavis would just be a real man, talk to the coach, talk to Ben. Stop tweeting. I mean, are you, is he more worried about his stats instead of being a team player? Then we really don't need him. But I think we can use him in the red zone. Yeah, I mean, you, you haven't seen any fades to him. Thanks, Alinda. What I also think is this could also be the product of his agent, one way or the other here. This agent, keep in mind, Gene, did not get paid last year by Martavis Bryant as a client. And I assume, just because I know how this, if he's not making any money, then he's probably going to have to put up some of his own money to make sure Martavis has what he needs, right? So you want him to cash in so the agent can cash in. Well, sure, there's a lot of different dynamics at work here, but whoever's managing it, including Martavis, is not doing a very good job. Uh, my prediction for you is that he will dump his agent and end up with Drew Rosenhaus. That's my prediction. Let's go to Jim in Brentwood. Hey, Jim, how you doing? Hey, Bob. Hey, Gene. Yeah. I have a question for Gene. Um, hey, man, you look like uh, you're one foot in the ground. Brad in Duncansville. Go ahead, Brad. Hi, Bob. How are you, buddy? What's up? I have a question for both of you. I was reading this morning from Pittsburgh Now. Are the Penguins really talking to Dana Superoff? No, I, I haven't heard too much about that. That name has come up, and, you know, I, I think they have other things to worry about. They made the trade for Riley Sheehan. You'll see him tomorrow in between Hagelin and Hornquist. Gene, is interesting. Uh, we haven't talked about him, so I'll ask you. Is a guy who had no goals for the first 80 games last year, two in his final game, and then no points so far this year. Jim Rutherford has made a habit of bringing guys in and, and changing of scenery, and maybe the culture has reinvigorated them. Do you think this can happen here? Well, Jim Rutherford's very confident that that is the case with this guy, um, and I'm not going to doubt him. I'm just not. But it's, it, you know, I mean, this guy's going to be expected to do a lot, including penalty kill, and he's, I guess, underachieved in Detroit uh, sure by by big leaps and bounds because he was a number one pick. But just yeah. remember too, I mean, they don't always work. He brought in David Perron as a former number one pick, and. That got off to a good start. I think he scored in his first night, Gene, and then it's just terrible. Yeah, but then they turned that into. Is that part of the Hagelin deal? I, I, I think so. I but whatever. Um, sometimes you take a shot. You got to do something. Let's go out to Joe in Shady Side. What's up, Joe? Hey, Bob. How are you? Good. What's up? All right. Quick question for you. A little bit off center cut tonight. I know you've been scratching ahead about this a long time. How, Bob, does Marvin Lewis keep his job? There's such a disconnect in that organization. It's so obvious for so long, it makes no sense that he's still there. Can you offer anything on those terms to help me understand? Thank you. Uh, Gene, all I can say to that is, I, you know, Brown likes him. He likes his stability he offers. Although, when you're 0-7 in the postseason, and when you're 2-4 and to start this season in what was termed a very important year, I, you know, I don't know where they go. They fired their offensive coordinator and made that deal. Maybe he felt the pressure to do that. Where is Marvin Lewis? I think he's in his last season and maybe in his last weeks. I mean, that exhibition on Sunday, really, really terrible. I mean, you have throwing the ball away on fourth down. In, in the locker room afterward, guys who were in there told me the Bengals were not, did not seem to be upset about that loss at all. Um, you know, I think it's, it's we're getting close to the end uh, for Marvin Lewis. And you're right, 15 years he's been there. That's the longest uh, active streak in the NFL short of Bill Belichick. I'm a big fan of stability, but only to a point. When you go 0-7 in yeah. the playoffs and then you're... Usually 0-1 in the playoffs. <laughs> right. We're due for a break. We'll take it. Come back with more right after this on Pittsburgh CW.